Okay, folks. Well, since I'm rained out this afternoon, I figured I'd sit down and do some equipment autopsy. I've got a uh, neat little rack mount 24 volt backup battery charger and some other miscellaneous bits from a communication station. Uh, it's about all I found. There was some other little miscellaneous bits and pieces, control boards and shit, but it had all been mutilated and cut up. All the cables chopped out of it. Um, this one's made by Motorola. We'll get into that one later or next. There's an SCADA module. RX, TX, TX, RX. Okay. So it's tele telecommunication stuff from uh, Arthur's Seat comm station. Yeah. And these are obviously just trimmers. There's probably a big wire wound pot or something in there. There'll be frequency trimmers. So we'll have a look, look at them. And whatever this is, it's a filter or something. Um, it's a Phelps Dodge brand communications RF amplifier. That little thing there, I don't know what that is, I can't read that. Um, and the power divider. So I'll pull it all to bits, open them all up and have a look at them. Uh, for now, I'm going to try and keep this power supply in one piece and resurrect it. Get it working again. It's a nice 10 amp, constant 24 volts with um, charging cycle timer. Um, voltage monitoring and everything, if it goes too high or too low it can trip out or cut down. Nice big ass fuses on it too. But it's full of water at the moment so I'm going to have a look at it then I'll set it aside and let it dry over a period of a week or so. There's another big power supply outside to autopsy as well, it's a 63 volt or 64 volt whatever it is, 30 amp massive bloody Siemens brand DC supply. So we might autopsy that one instead because it's pretty much, I don't know, I might be able to use it for electrolysis, but it's pretty heavy duty stuff. Okay, I've got the covers off it. Looks pretty impressive too, it's well made. It's Australian made. Uh, made in Boleyn, Victoria. Not too far away from me. And by PJ Law and Company, Electrical and Electronic in Engineering. It's only rated 10 amps output, which is quite surprising for such a big chunky power supply, but it'd be a nice smooth, properly regulated current as well. And looking at the size of these bloody caps and things, it's just going to be some serious, uh, seriously good power, particularly for backup of a communication station. Yeah, there's two big rectifiers there. Um, Silicon controlled rectifiers, I guess, because they've got leads on them. Let's go into this board up here. Fairly basic solid state stuff. This thing must be pretty old. You know, metal can uh, transistors. It's a bit busted up. It's been thrown on the ground pretty hard and there are some things floating around in here. There's a couple of relays. I think that one goes in there and that one goes on there. That's a timer. A <laughs> pneumatics timer. Interesting. But yeah, standard NHP type. It's probably a delay timer for a pneumatic system, but it worked just fine for this. And it's full of water, so I'm going to open all that up and let it dry out. That's a contactor. Might be charging on or off. There's a little resistor, 200 ohm, 20 watt resistor. These capacitors are 75 volt, 8000 microfarad DC each. So that's pretty serious. Standard panel switches. Um, that's the back of the timer. It's got a tiny little synchronous AC motor on it to drive it. The transformer is... No, that's a ballast. It's only got two leads. Oh, I see. It's coming off the rectifier. There's DC and going through these two ballasts. That's the main transformer. These are ballasts. So this thing would handle pretty serious inrush current. Yeah, that's pretty good. This thing's definitely worth fixing. That's the main transformer, which can be any input voltage you want, 200 to 250 volts. Obviously it's on 240 at the moment. And that's the output from it. Going to there. So, input to the um, rectifier bridge. Output to DC caps and two um, chokes or whatever they are. Sorry, um, ballast or choke coils. Choke coil, I think that is. These things here are just control relays. Yeah, they do something. 
Most of this other stuff is charging regulation and voltage regulation. This is the most important bit. Even if I don't get any of this shit working, it's not really relevant for what I want to do with it anyway. Basically, it's just going to be a big manually operated battery charger, whereas this is supposed to run in an automated fashion when the battery voltage drops or something like that. It's designed to be permanently connected to the batteries in a telecommunication station. And it's a maintenance charger, it just maintains voltage. That's mains input. That is probably monitoring for voltage and stuff, God knows what. I don't really know how they had this connected up. And that's battery connection there, positive and negative. <laughs> Wimpy little lead going out to it. Yeah, it is only 10 amps. It's negative going across that little bridge. I bet you this thing could handle way more current than 10 amps. It's only rated to that because it's a maintenance charger, but that transformer could probably put out 20 amps or so. Easy. Oh well, that's a little quick look around this one. I'm just about out of battery and I'm going to set this aside and let it dry out. I'll also drag that big Siemens one in and uh, get that ready for autopsy as well. I like it when they build stuff basic like this. You can service every single bit on it. There's no surface mounts. There's two ICs which are socketed so they're easy to remove and replace. And it looks like two diodes. Yeah, there's no third pin, so those must be diodes. Oh no, they've got base collector and emitter stamped on them, it's just the middle pin's been cut off. Interesting. Transformer, another PJ Law one. Oh well, on with the next one. Okay, I'm getting into these little goodies here. This thing here is just a trimmer or something. Oh, sorry, filter. There you go. It says it on there right there. It's by Polar Electronic Industries. Melbourne. And that's all that's inside it. There's two contacts and obviously the trimmer assembly inside. Being radio waves, I'm guessing this might be from an early communication um, mobile phone tower. It's pretty old school technology but everything about it tells me it's wireless. Um, that's an antenna power splitter or something. Yeah, Antenna Engineering Australia. 500 megahertz. So this must be old analog communications or something, mobile phone communications. That's fairly well sealed but it's just yeah, probably the same thing, you've got antenna input and then a divider four ways. So that's a sealed unit, that can stay as it is, so can that one. If anyone's interested in, in them in, inside Australia, let me know. I'd be happy, happy to give them to a good home, but I don't really want to be shipping stuff international unless you're a long time subscriber and Contributor, contributor, or however you say it. And RF amplifier, we'll crack that one open and have a look at that soon. But for now I'm going to try and get this end out of it. I think that's brass. It's fairly uh, heavy. So I'll try and pop this end out, or at least pop that out, and uh, see what that looks like. Okay, I've got the top out, destructively of course. I know there's some radio communications geek or somebody who's going to be flipping out at this video of me destroying this perfectly good piece of equipment. But, oh well, shit happens. I'm not going to ship it halfway across the world just because somebody might want it. So yeah, that's the only thing I'd think that'd be is a variable capacitor or something. So, that's hollow inside and those little collars there squeeze tight on that bit there and that's about it. There's really nothing to it. I was expecting a wire wound type trimmer or something but that's all it is. There's nothing there. It's all brass. Heavy. <laughs> Scrap metal now. Oh well. That's the end plate for that. That's aluminum. Yeah. Oh and those input things were just, yeah, pickup tabs obviously. RF must travel through the air inside the canister and it picked up by these or one's trying to transmit to the other with that thing in the, in the middle I've got no idea I'm not a communications expert let's go on to these bigger ones well not bigger but different ones I might open this up if I get time okay so it's not mobile phone stuff 
as say a radio tower type thing it's actually com well, remote monitoring and supervision control of machinery you know Arthur's seat is a fairly high mountainy hilly thing it's got its own chair lift and everything and the approach roads definitely fun to drive on um, so yeah it's one nice nice tall hill on the morning peninsula probably the highest one around and yeah according to this article it's used for monitoring equipment by remote so it sort of makes sense there must be something up there which was using a or whatever it was just using this scatter system to monitor or control and monitor by remote controlling PLCs and other control systems yeah I'll put a link to this article on Wikipedia and it. it's quite long and well worth reading I've learned a lot so we're not dealing with broadcast or transmission equipment this was just for monitoring some piece of machinery up on Arthur's seat it's quite interesting okay well, this is the uh, or TXRX unit. Evidently there's either trimmers or filters on here. And I'll find out when I open them up but yeah it's uh, kind of interesting. The DA in scatter stands for data acquisition so this could also be for weather monitoring. Being such a high peak they might have been monitoring weather from up there. So it could have been used for anything. If the guy does come back to the scrapyard with more stuff I'll ask him but I wasn't here, I wasn't there when this stuff came in, hence why it got wet. Otherwise I would have kept it dry and safe and secure. It's got some nice little connectors on it, like old school CB radio connectors. Yeah. Four hundred and ninety nine megahertz. <laughs> Pretty high frequency. I wonder if this is copper or is it just electroplated. I've seen a lot of com gear outer housings and things which look like copper, but they're actually electroplated aluminum or stainless steel or some other shit like that. Mild steel. I might start with a mangled one. I don't know what practical use these would have in any, any hobby, but if anyone knows, just shout out and I might be able to send you one to play with. Uh, of course, for shipping fee or whatever, scrap value. That one's bashed in, that one's bashed in, but the TX, this TX and this RX are both okay. So I might pull those two to pieces and these two here can just sort of sit on the shelf for a week or two and I'll find out if anyone wants them. But I'm pretty sure it's the same as that big canister I just took apart before, that filter. Oh yeah, that's the manufacturer. It's made by Motorola. And it is a T1504A. So, if anyone knows what that is, uh, I'll probably Google it and look it up anyway. 493 megahertz to 499 megahertz frequency. So, it's pretty high frequency. Um, this actually looks like steel, it's just been copper washed. Yeah, they are. It's rusting. So, yeah, it's not real copper, it's just electroplated steel, as usual. It had a lot more, lot more price to a finished unit if it was uh, solid copper housings. It'd also be a lot heavier. At the moment, that's pretty light. Okay, so this one's essentially the same as the uh, big round canister, but it's just a different form and a different style. We've got two little screw terminals which are locked. Oh, I see what they're doing. They're adjusting the um, gap between those two wires. So, have got two wires there with an adjustable gap, and they're insulated from the casing, of course. And you also got this variable capacitor thing down the centre of it, so that's kind of interesting. And this outer case is actually solid copper too. Just this pressed metal end is uh, electroplated steel, which is already rusting, even with that short amount of moisture damage to it. Um, God knows what the other ones are like inside, but it doesn't look like there's anything in there that'd be badly hurt by it. So yeah, there ain't much to that one either. 
it's the same as what the other one was. Let me pull that out, but that's just a, I suppose, a variable capacitor or something. Interesting. Okay, well this one's the uh, TX one, the other one was RX and it's little tabs uh, different in shape, they're pressed metal and they're grounded to the casing so I think TX is transmitting, RX is receiving so this one's a little bit different, it's using the casing as its um, other side and sort of makes sense, the grounded body of the machine that's up there on the hilltop becomes part of the um, the sist part of the system of transmission. So yeah, it's quite interesting. And again, I don't think. Yeah, the shaft's definitely steel. That's not. Bolts. Yes. Yeah. Only the shaft in the center is steel on this part of it, but the rest of that's steel. Hmm. No, oh, the other two are still sitting there. They have got water in them, though. Now, oh, might all end up in the scrap metal bin anyway. Not really worth the effort to try and pull all that shit out of it. Press that bushing out. Yeah. Too dirty for copper scrap, and not really worth the effort to pull it all to bits. I'll just chuck it in the pile again. Uh, I think that's the end of that one. Thanks for watching.